Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Agnieszka Sekula and Dr. Prash. They're joining us here as co-founders of Enosis Therapeutics. Uh, they're going to talk about the publishing of their first academic paper, examining the synergistic applications of VR technology and psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, both of you. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, uh, Agnieszka, if you could uh, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, your area of expertise, and then Dr. Prosh, if you would do the same and talk a bit about uh, your company's mission. Sure. Um, so my background is in biomedical science. Um, I've been using med tech in different fields of science and medicine uh, for many years. Um, and among those was VR tech. Um, I've been using VR in um, space medicine, uh, in forensic medicine, uh, in nuclear science. Um, and at some point, I got really interested in the potential of VR to be used therapeutically. Um, I then went back to the university and studied psychology um, and looked at VR as a therapeutic modality. Um, I, during that time, I got really interested in altered states of consciousness and in different ways of inducing altered states. Uh, and that's when psychedelics came into view. So I never really had um, sort of personal experiences with psychedelics. That's not how I came to this space. Um, my interest emerged purely from studying it and from the data that was produced as a result of clinical trials with psychedelics. Um, so it made sense to me to um, use those therapies or introduce those therapies for patients. Um, and Prash and I met through a different project that we are working together on. Uh, it was a paper on altered states of consciousness. Um, and in the conclusion of that paper, we, uh, we realized that um, combining different modalities of altered states at the same time uh, might help to augment the effect and improve patient outcomes. Um, and this is how we started thinking about combining virtual reality and psychedelics at the same time to um, enhance clinical outcomes. And Dr. Prash? Yes, I, I'm, a, I'm a medical doctor. Um, I started off as a surgical trainee and then discovered psychedelics. Um, and very rapidly lost interest on operating in the body, sadly, um, when I could operate in the mind. And even if that sounds like a cheesy line, um, but that's when I started psychiatry training with the sort of explicit intention of working with psychedelics. Um, I've been one of the more outspoken advocates for psychedelic therapy in Australia over the better part of the last seven to eight years, um, the first five years of which was uh, was tough going, um, but obviously in the last couple of years that needle has shifted significantly, uh, which has been really encouraging. And um, meeting Agnieszka and uh, her introducing this idea of virtual reality to me was a it was a game changer in the way uh, I could think about um, the psychedelic therapy process um, and what tools were available to optimize and modulate that. Um, and that's, as Agnieszka has mentioned, how we've ended up working together. How is it that an altered state of mind lends itself in a beneficial way when you're dealing with mental issues such as uh, depression or PTSD, things of that nature? Um, alterations in the state of mind or, or state of consciousness are something that we work with all the time as humans, whether we realize it or not. Um, it isn't actually novel to us, and we're we're constantly actually fiddling with um, and working through different states of of consciousness, whether that's um, dream states or ruminative states or or drug induced uh, states. Uh, conditions like depression or anxiety are often can be sort of drilled down to being um, disorders of perspective and disorders of perception um, as a result. And anything that can allow you to shift that perspective or can create paradigm shifts um, in the way you view the world, the way you view yourself, the way you view your relationships with others um, can have long lasting sustainable effects um, on the way your mental health then sort of proceeds from that point on. And that's exactly what um, psychedelics are, are able to do and why they prove um, incredibly powerful. 
You said that the going was hard concerning acceptance uh, in this space of of psychedelics uh, being used, but you say that um, the mindset has kind of shifted. What are some of the risks associated with psychedelics and then some of the risks associated with combining VR technology with psychedelics? Okay. Psychedelics, as much as they have an incredible amount of promise, and as much as, and this is what a lot of a lot of researchers in the space fear, as much as they've started to be touted almost like a, a sort of wonder drug or a panacea for all, um, is that's a dangerous notion. Um, psychedelics are an incredibly powerful tool when used properly, um, much like sort of gunpowder is or was. Um, but the the risk with psychedelics are that anything that opens one's um, state of consciousness up to such a degree, if not managed with the appropriate set, setting, intention, um, and in a safe, secure, and, and comfortable manner, um, leaves one in an incredibly vulnerable state and permeable to whatever external environmental stimuli may exist around them at that point. And again, if the, if the setting hasn't been curated properly, if the individual hasn't been, you know, their mindset hasn't been prepared properly, um, that leaves one open to a significant psychological decompensation or, or, or compromise, mm-hmm. um, which is why the psychedelic therapy process is very different to the recreational use of psychedelics, which has all of those risks as exactly outlined, whereas the, the, the therapy process is very particularly and specifically manicured and curated as to protect around those risks, but instead um, sort of to utilize the, the, the effect of that opening up. Um, virtual reality, though. Um, so introducing virtual reality um, comes with a set of risks that introduction of any type of stimuli um, has in the psychedelic therapy. So as Trash mentioned, um, the, an open mind is um, very prone to respond um, to anything that is introduced to it in both good and bad way. Um, and we have to be very careful with what type of stimuli we are introducing. So we like to say that uh, with VR and psychedelics, less is more. Um, and so we are working on introducing this type of stimuli very slowly. If we don't, um, there is the risk of, uh, first of all, guiding the experience overly or directing the experience, which is something we want to avoid because we want this process to be led by the patient and by their own internal healing process. Uh, we can distract them if we uh, provide a wrong kind of stimuli. Uh, we can overstimulate them, uh, which is very dangerous when someone is already in um, in a state of mind that is very sensitive to to different um, perceptions. Um, we uh, there's obviously um, any limitations in terms of the discomfort that can be um, that the patient can experience, especially. Um, during the dosing session itself, when there's already a lot of different bodily sensations, uh, when people's temperature tends to um, um, jump up and down. Um, so introducing any form of tech, there has to be a lot of care around that. Um, and perhaps the biggest danger comes from the fact that there's a lot of commercial interest in this space. Um, and those scenarios um, that that might one day be used in treatment with psychedelics might be developed by um, gaming companies because there is a lot of a lot of interest from that side, um, and that is something that is worrying in terms of uh, producing the scenarios that have all those limitations that I mentioned. What would either of you say to clinicians who are interested in researching organizations such as yours and discovering how to best utilize VR solutions with their PAP? It's applicable. Our VR solutions are meant to be one uh, treatment and treatment condition agnostic um, and substance agnostic. Again, our, the purpose of the sort of VR modulated process is to optimize the psychedelic therapy process, um, not necessarily for any one particular yeah, condition or substance. Um, so the fact that it's applicable across um, the range, the entire sort of range of the way psychedelic therapy is used now, um, we we invite anyone to come in and come and speak to us, um, or to to look into how that may be easily fit in. I guess we can think about the way music is used in psychedelic therapy and is used to optimize um, the process. 
and regardless necessarily of whether you know, what substance you're working or what treatment condition you're working uh, towards, the the utilization of music is essential, and that's probably the best analogy we can we can draw to um, in terms of how we see VR being being utilized. So my advice would be um, do not go for the low hanging fruit. Um, VR is not just an environment design machine, uh, and in fact creating, let's say, ideal settings within VR and then providing it for patients for an extended period of time might actually be counterproductive. Um, so the advice to anyone who wants to work or research this space uh, would be to think very carefully about what kind of outcomes they are targeting, uh, what they want, an experience design or any stimuli that they provide uh, for anyone going for a psychedelic psychotherapy um, is supposed to accomplish, and only then go back to VR and see whether VR is the best suited message to provide that stimuli. So it is, we have to always start from the experience design perspective and what is it that we want to accomplish, and then look at the tools we've got available. Um, and VR's capacity to act as very different modalities to just an environment creation um, is what we encourage people to look at. Well, give us a website where we can learn more. It's enoxistherapeutics.com. E-N-O-S-I-S therapeutics.com. Exactly. I I thank you both for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this evening. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Agnieszka Sekula and Dr. Prosh. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.